everyone has a great story to tell. You don't need to be like that guy from 127 hours. You know the guy who sawed off his own arm to escape that ravine? I mean, how many of us have been through an insane life experience like that? It's not the experiences you have that matters. It's all about learning how to tell them. When I first started out, basically all I had was a story. I had this experience of losing my dad to cancer and I felt that there was something in this experience that could help people in some way. I didn't really know <laughs> how that was and I didn't really know what that looked like, but I felt I had to keep on sharing this story. And when I first started out, I made the mistake of sharing the story chronologically. And I know that sounds a little bit weird, but it'll make sense as we go through. And I also added far too much detail to it. There were versions of the story where I told my, my dad's life story of his, his time in the army and his, his time selling insurance and, and growing up as a kid. And that was before even getting into the story and the, the dramatic tension, if you like, of the, the final hour of his life, what I called the last 60 minutes. And that became ultimately the, the title of the talk and a book and everything else that, that followed from that. So I put in way too much detail, tried to tell far too much of the story. And sometimes the telling of this story would take me about 40 minutes on stage. And considering that sometimes you don't even have that amount for your <laughs> entire talk, never mind telling the, the signature story that anchors it, I had to really find and refine a technique and a process for telling this story. And that's ultimately what I'm going to share with you today. What I want to share with you is a simple storytelling structure. What are the three key elements that every story needs? And you can use this for the signature story that you anchor your entire work and message around, but you can also use it for the simple little anecdotes that you scatter throughout your speeches. It really is a one size fits all structure that you can use for any type of story that you want to tell. So, what are the three parts I hear you say? <laughs> Let me tell you a story. The first part of every story you should be telling is the struggle. And this is a big mistake a lot of people make when they're speaking on stage. So often people don't lead with their struggle they lead with their success. And I'm sure you've watched a speech like this. Somebody's come on the stage and they've said, I'm the vice president of sales. I've worked at this company for 11 years. Over this time, my team has increased productivity by 30%. Our revenue has increased 283%. How interesting do you find that? How much do you buy in to that person? You don't, do you? So instead of leading with the success, you've got to lead with the struggle. You've got to give us that relatable character and a relatable journey that you can take us through. And it all begins with the struggle. For example, when I was telling the story of, of losing my dad to cancer, sometimes I wouldn't give too much detail on the actual experience of being there with him, just enough to, to get the broad themes. Where I would really begin the story is actually the aftermath of losing my dad. That year, 2015, I graduated from university. I lost my dad to cancer. I just entered a new relationship, which, spoiler alert, worked out quite well. <laughs> but what I really talk about is this feeling of feeling lost, of literally just going out into the world and saying, okay, I'm, I'm now supposed to be an adult. I've I've got my degree, I'm, I'm in a relationship, I'm looking for, I'm looking for work, I've got the, an idea that I want to start a business. And so I really start in the, the uncertainty and the, the lost feeling. And there's so much loss in that opening account. The, there's losing a previous lifestyle of, of being a university student. There's the loss of my parent, my mentor, my dad and him not being able to guide me during this process. And then there's a loss of identity of who I felt I was before and not really wanting to be that person anymore. 
That's where you've got to start. That's where all of your stories really generate connection with the audience. They don't connect with your success, they connect with your struggle. Any story you tell, you've got to bring us into that moment of struggle because that's where you pull in the audience and that's where you set the scene to go into stage number two. The second stage of the storytelling structure is search. You've outlined the struggle now you tell us about the search for the solution to that struggle. The search for how you overcome the challenge or adversity that you're facing in that first stage of the story. Again, to illustrate with the example of my story, this is where I started to go into how I was trying to find answers. So I started reading personal development books. I started listening to motivational podcasts. I started to film my own videos. And if you scroll way back on my YouTube channel, you'll see those videos. You'll see the videos that are part of that second part of the journey for me, the second part of this story. The search is where you start to take people on a journey and ultimately thinking about where do I want to take my audience to? You don't just give people a lot of struggle and then say, Hey, that was pretty moving, wasn't it? And now I'm going to talk about something else. <laughs> That's not the way that it works. You've got to transition your audience out of the struggle and think about where do you want to take them to? Ultimately, what's the purpose of this speech? What's the thing that you want the audience to take away? You want them to think differently. You want them to do something differently. You want them to relate to the world in a different way. Whatever that is, you've got to think about how this story can take them there. So this second stage is a really key transition of thinking, now that I've got the audience on side, now that I've been able to show a sense of relatableness, being able to build some rapport, and most importantly, allow the audience to actually see themselves in the story, then you think about how am I going to take the audience to that end destination of this particular speech? And that end destination is what we're going to cover in the third stage of this storytelling structure. If you've got a story that you feel needs to be told, a story that needs to be shared with the world, then I can recommend Rise and Inspire to help you to tell that story. Literally, if you look at the subtitle, it says, find your voice, tell your story and share your message. And that's what this book is all about helping you doing, helping you get that story out into the world. We're covering a little bit of how you might tell that story today, but ultimately it's not just about learning how to tell the story, it's learning about how to find the people who will listen to the story and ultimately find the people who will be changed by the story that you have to tell. That's the journey that this book takes you on. Rise and Inspire is available on Amazon, ebook, paperback, audiobook, all of the books. So if you have that story that you need to share with the world, this book is going to help you to do that. You can get your copy by clicking the link in the video description below. Now, let's transition to the third stage of the storytelling structure. The third stage of the structure that brings this all together is the solution. You tell the audience the solution to the struggle. And remember I said earlier about the vice president of sales who's got blah, blah, blah productivity and blah, blah, blah revenue? It's not that telling that is bad. It's telling that without context is bad. Would you feel different if that vice president of sales said, I grew up in a single parent home. I watched my mum working three jobs to try and create a living for me and my, my brother and my sister. And I remember looking at my mum and saying, one day I'm going to be able to earn enough where I can pay you back for all of that hard work, where you don't have to work a day in your life again. And when I went out to the workplace, I found that I had this, this natural gift of the gab <laughs> where I could, I could relate to people and I could interact with them and I could get them to buy into ideas and visions of their future. And working at this company has given me the means and the ability to make the most 
of what I've got. And I'm delighted to be standing in front of you today as the Vice President of Sales. Looking back at a team that's increased its productivity by 20%, our revenues have increased 283%. And every day when I see those numbers coming in, I think of my mum and I think of all the money that I can send to her to support her, to give her the retirement that she deserves. How are you relating to that vice president now? Very different, isn't it? Because we have the context and we have the journey and we can see why the final result matters so much. And that's what you've got to do with your story. You've got to think about how do I present the, the context and the journey to that solution I'm telling my audience. And you know, I've done this in greater detail in, in another video, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it here. But you'll know, ultimately for me, my solution of all of that searching was finding Brendan Bouchard on YouTube, buying a couple of his books, going across to Experts Academy in California, recognizing the power of speaking and realizing that was what I was meant to do. That was the path that I was going to go on. That was how I was going to tell this story, share this experience and be the person that I felt I now wanted to become. If I just start with the story of I went to a seminar in the US and it was quite good and I decided I wanted to be a speaker. You don't get the same sense of how significant and valuable that was, how powerful speaking is and how much it changed me and so I know how much it can change others and that's why I'm telling you, yes you, to speak because I know what an impact it has because my life was changed by a speaker. Your life can be changed by a speaker and you can change someone else's life as a speaker. That's the solution, that's the power, that's the end destination that you're taking people to. But you can't just lead with that message, you have to give them the context and the story behind it. And that's what the solution is all about. It's painting that journey and giving us that end destination. When you set up the context, when you set that journey, that final solution will pff, hit people hard. They will go, wow, maybe I can do that too. Wow, maybe I can change. Wow, maybe my life can be different from what it is now. And that's our job and responsibility as speakers is to give people that realization, is to paint that vision for them that their life can be different. And even when they can't see it themselves, they can see it in you and through you. And that's the power of the stories we tell. And with this simple structure, you're going to be able to tell powerful stories. You don't need to have sawn your arm off in a ravine in order to get people to that final destination. In fact, sometimes it's the simpler, more relatable stories that actually make the biggest difference. Look at my story. I lost a parent. Don't we all? Don't we all lose our parent at some point in our lives? Isn't that the natural order of things? There's nothing special about my story. There's some idiosyncrasies in, in the timing and the age that I was, but apart from that, can't we all think about the effect that our parents had on us? And can't we all think about the life that we want to live that makes our parents proud? That's a relatable story. And that I think was the, the secret to my success with this story. I learned how to tell it in a more captivating way, but really, it was just a story that people could relate to. And you have so many stories that people can relate to. So tell those stories. People need to hear them and you will be surprised at how much you can change people with the simple stories that you have.